winning. Uh, we're going to talk about shot selection on defense, on positional play. Uh, like you will learn smart moves during the session. So which allow you during your league matches, during your practice matches, improve your game. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm just going to the view. And that's it. Okay. Maybe I have to put a little bit further back so you could see the better view. One second. Okay. That was the view. Let's the back. One second. Maybe from this part, the table is going to be slightly better. Okay, looks pretty okay from this angle. I can only show vertical view, so if you cannot see the left part of the pocket, just let me know and I will turn. Okay. So, I'm just going to show the right part of the pocket because that's the most important. Let's say you have a 10 point lead and you have red like this. So depending on what kind of table you play, it's, uh, if you play on the table, which is pretty risky to play there because there is more pockets or the, the rubber is tight and there is a high chance to leave the shot, I don't recommend to play the shot. Unless you're really confident, you know? So from this position, your job is to make sure that Cuba remains here and you put Red Bull to the correct position. Of course, it's logical. You have to make a stop shot here and make a snooker behind the black, but you also have to think about the Red Bull which means, you know, you have to think about direction where the Red Bull is going to end. So in my thinking here is that I'm playing one cushion, two, two cushions, three cushions, and the Red Bull is going to bounce to the middle part of the table. And I will have a cover from the black ball, pink ball, and blue ball. And also there is a high chance that if I play correct speed, it's going to go behind the colors. So, so I play the shot. I play maybe touch of right hand side so the cubo the red bull will go more this side. So I play like that. So I knew the direction and you can see there is a nice snooker. And from here for the opponent it's very difficult not only to touch the red but also not to leave anything for me. The opponent has to be really accurate in the way he makes snookers, okay? So you can try to use this in your advantage, especially, you know, if you're not sure about your pot or you're not sure about the position, you know, you can always, when the red ball is here, put the cubo here, just make sure that few color balls are covering. And that's how you can pick up some points and win the frame. So that's the situation number one. Situation number two, again, safety shot. Let me think about the position, which happens pretty often. So, it 
it's a very common situation on the last thread. So many people, what they do, they playing playing ball with touch of topspin and making sure the red ball goes around and goes here. But the movement is a little bit unpredictable because you have to be very accurate in the way you hit the ball. So you couldn't touch any of those reds and you just have to think about, you know, where the, it's very hard to predict where the red ball is gonna end because the most important thing is to secure the red ball here. Because if you play just top spin, you could easily touch the ball colors. So you see it was very fine margin and I was a little bit lucky that I didn't left anything to my opponent. It was like very close to the green. So if you touch the green, it went here and it would be difficult to predict the outcome. So better position is to play, if the red ball is here, you're playing long cushion, long cushion and red ball there. And then you are guaranteeing yourself that red ball is not gonna be potable. So in this case, you play touch of right hand side on the cubo, okay? And the cubo is gonna bounce the short cushion and go back to the direction of the black ball. And then the high possibility that you're gonna have a nice snooker or a nice empty shot with the long distance. Just like that. So uh, I play a little bit too good the shot. I play too much side. That's why he bounces a little bit too much to that side. So that's my mistake. I left the open red. So in this case, I have to use a little bit touch of right, uh, less right hand side because it depends what kind of table you play. You play on a new cloth or you playing on old cloth. So I'm just gonna play <coughs> a little bit thinner and left side. But the good thing is that you, you're always gonna have a distance between Red Bull and Cubo. You can always, you can leave the Red Bull. Maybe I was a little bit too high on the Red. And then it goes straight to the colors. We have to play from here. A little bit more angle. Now, now that's the good angle. So I play. Touch up right hand side. Just like that. That's what I wanted to do. And you always, always, most of the time securing the red bow there. And it's not really easy way to make a resave. Of course, you play. You can play with touch of right hand side and clip the red. So in this case, if the opponent makes look error behind the red, so I will play with center right, and I will play in such a way that the red ball goes through this gap, and I will play in such a pace that he didn't finish to the close to the pocket, just bounce from the cushion to the middle. In that case. I can expect that at least I will keep distance between Cuba and Objable. And, you know, because I'm playing on the new cloth, I can hit full foot the face to the red, and the Cuba is going to remain to that kind of part of the table, like where the buck colors are. Just like that. Okay, so this time I hit it thin to the red. So. Because I'm playing on the new cloth, I can play a little bit lower on the cubo, a little bit lower on the cubo. So the cubo went more to the right, and then I will get catch full for the face, red ball, and then I will make a nice safety once again. So a little bit lower. And I'm pretty happy with this shot. You see, I hit it full for the face. Cubo remained to that kind of part of table, red ball, one cushion, two cushion, and behind the pink. So that's pretty nice resafe, you know. Uh, also, 
there is kind of situations like this. You can play, you can learn to play two cushion escape. So the cue ball is around here. It's just that it depends how far the red ball is from the cushion. Just about correct distance. So I want to play one cushion, two cushions, keep, keep the cue ball here and make sure that the red ball at least goes to that direction. It doesn't really matter if it touches green ball. It's very hard to predict, but I want to get through this gap and you can easily put the red ball there and, or you can hit here and go there, you know? So I'll use two cushions, touch on right hand side with top spin. So I'm just thinking about that. I want to put Kubo right here then it, it is going to automatically hit the right. And I will, will play about medium speed because I also don't want to hit the ball a little bit too hard. So I play with touch of right hand side using two cushions. Okay. That was not good attempt. More right hand side like that. So you see, guys, I hit the thin side of the red ball. So it's very powerful to teach yourself to play full with the face using two cushions on the red. Very nice shot to practice. And you know, when you're watching the World Championships, you know, those kind of players are capable to play those kind of shots more consistent. So I'm just gonna use more angle this time and you should make a job done but always use the running side for that shot because that it will just easier to do. So using touch of right hand side, just like that. And you see there is a possibility that the cubo can go to the pocket, but at least I'm keeping the distance and I'm not leaving opponent in easy positions. So that's the kind of tactical side you can use into your game to apply. I'm just going to check the questions right now and I try to answer. Okay, four people are watching. Let's see in the commentary. Did anything? Did anybody ask the question? So guys, if you have any questions, just let me know. Ask me. Uh, because, you know, I just explained you a few things. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna continue to talk. I, and by the way, uh, I'm doing 15, 20 minute sessions for free for those who never had coaching session with me. And if you want to get in touch with me and talk about your game, beginner, intermediate, or advanced player, you just let me know, text me to the WhatsApp. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about a little bit potting side. So let's say you have a 20 point lead and you have a basic position like this. Okay. So let's start from here. So let's say you're winning by 19 points. So you have to think about how to make your break as simple as possible in this situation. So there is a couple of situations. You can stop the ball right here to the pink, put it to the middle and just roll here. Or you can put the reds, make below black ball spot and use one cushion to get to the red. So it just all depends how you like to play the shot, but like in my way, like I just like to make the game as simple as possible. And if I can avoid cubo traveling, then I will make sure that the cubo travels as least amount possible. So my thinking is that I put the red, I make a stop shot here. Then I will roll the pink bow into the middle pocket and I will have a nice angle for the red, which after I can go for the blue bow here or here, or if I'm going to have bad angle, I can always go 
other side there or there. So that's the plan. Especially when you're under pressure, you just want to have a clear thinking, you know, what do you want to do with Kubo? Because that allows you to make good decisions and be focused on the potting after you think about everything. So I make a stop shot. So I have a nice angle for the ping. Just below ping ball spot, I can roll the shot and play using one cushion or without cushions, but I will use one cushion. Just like that. I have a really good angle for the red. And from here, I even can go for the few options. I can go with screw back and get position here for the pink or for the blue into that part in the pocket. So in this case, I have a really good angle for the pink. So I will screw back. And then afterwards, I want to use cushion and go for the yellow ball. So I do screw back. Okay. Not really good angle, but still from here, because I was thinking about plan B, I can use two cushions and get for the position for the yellow ball there. So here I'm just gonna use top touch, top spin touch of left hand side. Just like that. And manage to get position for the yellow. But the point is, you try to think about point A and point B because I didn't make a perfect cube, but still I had position anyways. So what the good players do, they, don't, they are not always perfect with their position, but they are very clear with their pattern play. And because of the clear pattern play, they achieve nice breaks. And because they achieve nice breaks, uh, they win more frames and matches. So that's kind of just my advice would be, you know, just to try to make your game as simple as possible you can. Okay, let me check how many questions I have. Let me check how many questions I have. And uh, are you on professional size pocket table? No, these are club table pockets. They are 85 mil millimeters and professional pockets are 79. I don't know about today's world championships. The pockets looks uh, big because maybe, but the, the, the cut, the cut shot were pretty easy. So if the question is about the pocket size, so if I play on new cloth and the pocket size is good, so like shot like this, on this table is pretty easy. So I can easily play, you know, drop in shot without worrying about too much. Because the rubber is pretty soft, even if you're hitting that side of the pocket, which is correct side, it still drops. If I hit other side and I play shot like this, I will try to hit to the figure side on purpose. You know, it's pretty easy to put. If I play on power shot, that's why I will play for the colors. Still goes in. Yeah, you still have to be accurate, but it's not like a hard rails, hard cushions. So you can play with confidence, those kind of shots. Anyways. So we have four people. Are there any more questions? Randy Burke, great help. Thanks in advance. Thank you very much. Um, right, let me check more questions. Yeah, so far we got only one question. So guys, I will continue our topic. You see what just now? I'm sorry, I was talking with my student now. Okay, so
Let me think about other kind of things. Okay, so in your opinion, it is better to play position from the black ball area this side for the right hand player or that side? Let me know in the comments. Just think through how would you play. Okay, so I am the right hand player and I know that from that side of the table, I can reach shots even from here. It's pretty easy for me to reach the shot and I don't need to use rest, yeah? But if I put like a mirror image to the other side, it's not anymore a comfortable shot. I need to reach and you know, put my cue under my belly like that, you see? And it's not really, not really easy to align yourself and have a nice follow through. So if you're a right-hand player, opposite for the left-handed, and you have a choice to play the last red and put cue ball right here, please do that because it's just gonna make your pot way easier. Especially for those who want to reach their first lineup century. If you are very often play players missing from the uncomfortable side just because it's very hard to reach shots, especially for the last two reds when it's time to make a century in the lineup. So try to leave uh, as simple as possible shot and to the comfortable side so you could reach the shot better. That's a pretty good advice and very useful on the pressure. So I will play the shot on purpose a little bit too hard and try to keep the cue ball here. So I'm going to play. So you see, I played a little bit too hard. It still is for this position, it's pretty comfortable to reach. If I, the cue ball was here and even here, I can still reach the shot, you see? Pretty easy shot for me. And from that side, you know, I have to be very perfect with my cue ball. And from here, I like this. Well, it, it, it's already tough. Long bridge, not enough follow through, very difficult. So try to be mindful where you put in cubo, which kind of site, and that will allow you to make the game as simple as you can. Okay, any more questions? We have seven people right now. We are on 23rd minute mark. Only Bizoid asked a question about professional size pockets. Any more questions, please, guys? You know, if you are interested, just let me know. Oh. Okay, sorry. And uh, guys, I'm just gonna let you know that uh, I'm doing online consultations for 50, 20 minutes. And if you never had coaching with me, I repeat again, you can text me or text to my administrator Victor Victoria and she's gonna contact with me and then we can arrange the session and talk about your issues about your game about technique about cubo control mental side combined with technical with the physical just let me know about uh, are you interested in having coaching session with me okay I'm gonna check the questions And there are not any more questions. So that's it. Take care and see you soon in this case. Hope that helped.